Good evening and welcome to the Arundel Camera Club virtual live stream for Thursday, January 13th, 2022. My name is John Milliker and I'm club president for the 2021-2022 season. The Arundel Camera Club was founded in, founded in 1957 and exists to promote the art, science, and education in all aspects and fields of photography. For more information about us, please visit www.arundelcameraclub.org. Thank you for joining us on our virtual live stream. At our most recent officers meeting, we've decided to call the rest of the club year for virtual only. In the event of an unexpected sudden stop to COVID, we'll reevaluate. But with this said, we know that many of our officers and members are looking for more human interaction, and we'll be we will be holding our local park meet and shoots and more once the weather starts getting warmer. It is our goal to start up in September with all normalcy restored, and this includes hybrid meetings in person as well as virtual, and a return to our print contests as well. Finally. And before, before tonight's photo discussion, here is our upcoming schedule. On January 15th, that's a Saturday, it will be the uh, field trip to the Basilica of the Assumption in Baltimore. Please take a look for an email about the scheduled tour we have set up for attendees. And then on January 20th, we have a contest, which is Digital Open. And on January 27th, we had a cancellation, and we've had a few presenters and hands-on nights that just aren't possible virtually. Please be bear with us as we try to shuffle the schedule around and fill gaps. If you or anyone you know would be a good presenter for a virtual night, please send recommendations to our programs chair. You can find her email on her website on our website. Okay, tonight we are we're very uh, we're very lucky to have our club zone uh, David Joiner. Uh, David joined the Arundel Camera Club in the late 1990s. When he first joined, he was just a rank beginner with a Nikon D50. But down in the hall from his office at the USNA. Uh, was then our club president, the late Howard Penn. Howard provided both encouragement and wise advice, a black belt helping out a scrawny white belt. Now, even with his Sony A7R3, David still thinks he's a beginner, I added that, David, compared to the aces, but having lots of fun learning how to be better. Uh, at the Arundel Camera Club, he served in various capacities, webmaster, newsletter editor, program chair, competition co-chair, and now that he's retired from the USNA, he helps out at the Arundel Camera Club as co-webmaster and manages our Instagram account at Arundel Camera Club. And some of his photos can be found at www.behance.net forward slash W-D-J-O-Y-N-E-R. And he also has an Instagram account at W underscore D underscore underscore J-O-Y-N-E-R. Welcome, David. Basically, this is uh, not um, one of the more technical talks it's going to be kind of a short talk and the kind of photography i do does not require um any kind of specialized architectural photography equipment uh there was an earlier talk by an by an actual architectural photographer um a professional and and he uh talked a little bit about the kind of equipment that's needed um so i i'm really you could sh shoot the kind of shots i shoot with a cell phone or you know if you have something more expensive that's great but uh really it's uh, it's not a tech the uh, techniques that i use are just are not technical they're just kind of artistic gotcha well i mean you you produce amazing stuff that uh, that seems to win a lot in our contests and you have a, a very unique eye for that well the, the the ideas are pretty simple so i'll try to explain them in in the talk and uh maybe that'll explain it really, it doesn't take uh, a lot to produce those kind of shots. Okay. You want to move right into the presentation? Okay. Here we go. I've got your first slide up. First slide. Okay. Can we move to the second slide? There you go. Okay. So um, I just wanted to basically point out that... Uh, um, what I'm going to be talking about today is not architectural photography, which is um, really defined more to be representational, almost journalistic. Uh, you do want to get a good representation of the what the architect has actually built. And um, I, I generally don't uh, use that perspective at all. But uh, um, this is Wikipedia's definition of architectural photography. And the photos that I'll present are not <laughs> architectural photography by this definition. Uh, so uh, next slide. Uh, so uh, really great. Uh, uh, one of the better uh, ph architectural photographers has uh, written quite a few books. Um, this is his definition. 
Uh, he calls it a straightforward documentation of the subject. And um, if you can do more, then maybe you can consider it our art. If you can uh, not only document the subject, but also present it from a, a unique perspective, then that's even better. So that's uh, Norman's, Norman McGrath's definition. And then next, uh, and uh, Julius Shulman is my favorite. Uh, he's also has quite a few uh, books. Um, I would say he's maybe one of the more famous. Also, a lot of people have heard of Julius Shulman, great photographer. And he he, uh, he doesn't actually have much of a, a definition that's uh, 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 that's very specific. It's a pretty generic definition uh something that you know i would certainly agree with but he he is an architectural photographer even though his definition is a bit broader than um, norman mcgrath or or wikipedia uh, next so uh this is uh so this is one of his most famous if not his most famous um photographs i call it iconic because uh it really is. Um, there, it's. It, this is a crop, and unfortunately, I I'm not uh, very skilled at doing Google slides, and so I I was having trouble getting the photos to fit <laughs> in the slides. So this is only part of his photo, but um, it's it's a great. You know, there's a enormous amount of. Uh, uh, effort put into this I, I believe this is this took a very long exposure and these models these women that you see uh, actually had to sit still for quite a long period of time um, but there at the end of the talk that I'm giving there's a um, a link to a article online published in the LA Times that um, discusses this photo they call it the most iconic photo um, in history or something like that. And anyway, they discuss this photo. So uh, uh, next slide. Uh, a lot of emotion can come into photos, even though it's architectural. You might think architectural is just documentary and it's not very um, emotional. But here's an example. Uh, I love this photo. Unfortunately, it's also cropped. It's actually a photo of the Dome of the Rock. And you can actually see the full dome, but I wasn't able to you know, my meager skills in doing slides, I wasn't able to get it. But you can kind of see the elements here. Um, there's the Dome of the Rock in the background, but then there are these kids, you can see actually three, there's one in the very bottom corner. These kids are showing off to each other by doing flips off the wall into the sand. <laughs> so it's like this great, you know, religious uh, 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 temple uh, that's both important that's important to uh, judaism to islam and to christianity yet for the kids it's just a playground so anyway i love that whole the emotion that comes into that photo it's a really great photo by jay mazel uh next and then um maybe my favorite photographer is on andre cortege this is one of his architectural photographer uh, photos uh that uh, those are the twin buildings uh, which uh, no longer stand and in front of a church or behind a church rather. Um, uh, so he had a nice interpretation juxtaposing these architectural uh, structures and uh, it, it makes a very nice photo, I think. Uh, next. And here's another uh, example of emotion. This is also Jay Mazel. Um, these buildings, you know, the, uh, on their own, they're rather attractive buildings. And then it's interesting that there's smoke behind them. But the smoke is actually the smoke from the rubble of the 9-11 attack. So you see, again, a huge amount of emotion going into something that looks like a standard kind of architectural photo. Uh, next. And then uh, just one last example. Uh, so I don't think Steve Weir is a famous photographer. This is, he had a, um, his, uh, some of his art, uh, photos were shown in lens work recently. And they're all these kind of looking up mirror type perspectives, but I, 
I do these kind of shots also. So he, this, this guy is an engineer, um, I believe, or maybe a physicist. And uh, this is his hobby. I think he works in Chicago and uh, he takes a lot of photos of downtown Chicago. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, those are just some samples of photographers' work, uh, much better photographers than me that are out there um, uh, and um, kind of illustrate the different uh, ways that you can uh, look at uh, architectural, actual architectural photography. And then, and now uh, for the next slide, please, um, I'll show you uh, next. I'll show you some of my photographs. So my photo, my pr approach is to look for geometry. That's uh, very important. I try to find rectangles, triangles, um, parallelograms, parallel lines. You know, I really try to f identify the geometry in the shot. And then I try to balance, the, you know, triangles or rectangles. I try to keep a balance of the geometry so the geometry is not lopsided. And then I sometimes will try to contrast forms also. Forms might be triangles and rectangles, or they might be steel and glass or concrete and glass. So different types of forms I try to also, or maybe sky and um building. So anyway, try to get all those in a shape. And of course, there's lots of ways I might choose one way of balancing geometry and contrast in different ways. You would have a different way. But the, these are the basic tools that I use. They're very simple. And it's just a matter of kind of trying to imagine things ge geometrically. Um, and I'll show you some examples on, in these photos. Uh, next. So you can see triangles um, on either side, and then there's a lot of parallelograms, um, and then there's also a balance. There's glass and steel here, so the glass, I tried to color uh, green as best as I could, and the, and the steel I tried to color um, yellow. The, the, I don't, if I remember right, this is not actually yellow. It's uh, like a, I don't know, a pretty plain color, but I was fiddling with the software. Um, I think it was just Lightroom. And in fact, it's not even the desktop Lightroom that I have. I actually have the Lightroom Cloud. So I was just playing with different um, colors in, that, in the Lightroom and, and got this. Uh, so there's some geometry there. Uh, next. And here, very similar shot. Oh, this is all black and white. Um, and again, just trying to balance um, uh, the um, rectangles and the lines and the whites and the blacks uh, a little bit. Uh, so that's another geometric shot. It's actually not lined up very well. I just noticed the uh, it should be straighter on top. But yeah, I had trouble. I'm, I, I apologize again. I have I had troubles kind of getting these photos into the right uh, shape to, to to look best. Uh, next. So this is one that um, is pretty recent and, uh, I, you know, entered, I think, this past year. And uh, so that's just uh, another example of A, geometry, and B, a contrast of form. So you can see there's the glass and the sky and there's a reflection. And so there's, you know, straight lines and then there's these kind of I don't know, um, nebulous, uh, you know, a cloud structure. and all, So all kinds of different contrasts uh, for this one, but definitely a lot of geometry. I actually intended this not to be symmetric about the center. So you, uh, you can see, it, it, you know, even though there's, I, I do say balance and geometry and stuff, I, I sometimes prefer it not to be perfectly symmetric. So you can see there's a, it's a little bit closer to the edge on one side than the other. And it's also slant, you know, the building itself, it looks kind of slanted to one side more than the other. So um, that was uh, just a, 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 a choice. And you may, you know, go to the same location and make a different choice. But this is on uh, Mount Royal Avenue in, in Baltimore uh, near, uh, near Route 83. It's actually uh, near um, 
uh, North Avenue and uh, I've forgotten the cross street, but uh, uh, anyway, up there near Micah um, is, is where this was taken. Next. So, um, so I, I, a lot of times it's just a simple matter to get a little bit of different geometry, just shift your perspective. Uh, so, uh, so next. So here, just to give a different um, uh, perspective, I, you know, this is a building, but it looks like you're walking out on to a floor, but the floor, this is actually the side of the building, it's not a floor. So it was just a matter of turning it over and I just thought that accentuates the geometry a little more than the other way, where the other way, I think if it was rotated uh, clockwise by 90, you would see, oh, that's a building and there's a reflection. But if you put it this way, you, I, to me, it emphasizes the geometry more and we're seeing circles and rectangles and uh, parallelograms um so uh, i i uh, i thought this uh, this made it a little bit more geometric next another one exactly the same kind of idea this one's uh, uh looking at the side of a building it's uh, been uh rotated again um so uh, this would have to be, yeah, I guess this would have to be rotated by negative uh, 90 degrees to look right. But uh, and then uh, also apply different colors here, um, orange and blue. These aren't realistic colors. I was, again, just playing with tones in, um, in Lightroom and uh, got these colors. And uh, But I, I like the, the different geometric shapes. You see some some you know parallelograms some rectangles uh there are a couple of triangles in there too there's just lots of geometry right, next so this one um oh okay yeah th this unfortunately this is cropped a little bit but um uh so what's different here is this is a normal building it's got these odd kind of um balconies, I guess you call them, on every corner. All right, so first I, you know, did the perspective kind of looking up at, at this angle, but then in Lightroom, you can actually create, you, you can make sure that certain lines are parallel. And so uh, I did that for this one, which created this odd shape on the upper, um, on the upper left of the photo you can only see like i unfortunately because i'm not very skilled at doing these slides <laughs> you can only see on the upper left you can see maybe part of one of the balconies but in fact if you see the whole photo it looks like a like a dinosaur ridge of back of the ridge or something it's hard to you know it, it, it's hard to see but which one was yeah, it, David? Was it this one? It's yes, yeah, number eighteen. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're doing a great job there. I don't know how you did that. Is that a little bit better? Better. Um, yeah. So now you can start to see at least one of them. The uh, one of the on the upper left, one the balconies. But there's actually in the actual photo, there's quite a few. So it looks like this strange. Uh, shape on one side and then these perfectly parallel. So anyway, it's pretty clear from looking at it that the geometry is there, but it's completely distorted. And I don't mind that. I don't mind these incredibly distorted photos of buildings. They're definitely not representational, but they're there to accentuate some kind of geometric aspect of the photo. So um, just want to emphasize you don't have to make things straight. You can make things look crazy, you know. And it, and to me, that that's uh, that's an artistic choice. And uh, I, you know, this that's the choice I made in this one. Um, next, uh, this is another uh, choice where I'm really trying to capture nothing but 
a kind of two-dimensional rectangular look and the all the, the the only contrast here that i kind of i kind of like the contrast between the clouds which are visible as a reflection there's no clouds in the background of you know above these buildings but uh, there's clouds in the reflection and then everything else is a rectangle there's maybe one or two triangles in here but for the most part this is down, dominated by rectangles and so there's a contrast in colors and there's a contrast in the in the really plain look at every single rectangle they're all solid colors except where there's a cloud reflection um, so the, the different different forms are present in this photo and I, I kind of liked it for that reason uh, next and he, here's another one that, yeah I take it uh, you know a, a gazillion of these where you're seeing just patterns and some people would argue well what am I looking at there's really nothing there there's no subject but to me the the patterns themselves I find soothing so Yes, there's a, um, a cloud reflection here, but really, uh, to me, it's the the contrast in the colors and the and the patterns themselves that I I like. So there's lots of geometry in here. It's a very simple photo, but um, I like them. Not everyone uh, likes these kind of photos, but I, I like these. Uh, next, another one. Uh, this one's in, um, I think this is the uh, Constellation building um, in uh, in Baltimore. And I may have changed the colors a little bit, but you see a lot of geometry here, lots of rectangles of different shapes. And then there's a contrast in the form between the solid glass and then these kind of louvered, I assume these are louvered um, air vents. Um, but uh, anyway, very geometric another one where I'm just, you know, looking at the geometry of this and, you know, the, any kind of dynamic nature of this photo is simply because of this diagonal of uh, vents um, here that are, you know, more or less in the center of the photo that, that leads a little, that gives you a little bit of sense of, of motion, but mostly, again, I'm just looking for uh, geometric patterns, and so this is a nice photo for that. Next. Um, this is another one of these, you know, kind of two-dimensional photos uh, straight on. I've entered this photo several times, um, sometimes in color where it's mostly green and other times in black and white. I never, I don't think I ever even got into honorable mention. But I, I like this. I, you know, I think this is very geometric. You can see lots of rectangles. There's also this, you know, stark contrast in black and white, and there's also some contrast in the in the forms uh, that you see. I don't know exactly what the ridges are that we're seeing here um, in the middle, but uh, um, anyway, uh, kind of, uh, again, another two-dimensional photo that's uh, uh, looking at the geometry. This is taken from. Um, the hill on the other side of the Inner Harbor um, by that park. Um, the, I forget what, now what the park is. Uh, I forgot what the name of the park is, but it's across the, it's across the water from um, uh, the Inner Harbor. And uh, there's a whole skyline of photos you can take and taken with a, with a um, uh, telephoto. Next. So uh, those were all kind of, you know, normal colors. I might have accentuated them a little bit, except for that uh, AACC one, the very beginning one, where the colors were really different. And I think there was another one that was orange and blue. The colors were really different. But um, here for the next, I'm, you know, really trying to swap the colors intentionally. And uh, so it's called tone mapping sometimes. Um, sometimes this needs specialized software but sometimes it doesn't. Um, next. So this, I believe, requires some specialized software. And um, so th this is just an ordinary glass um, uh, building, uh, glass and steel. And you can see some of the offices there. Um, 
um, and I think what I did was use um, GIMP. There's a plugin for GIMP called G apostrophe M I C, like gimmick. I guess it, uh, that's a kind of a joke. <laughs> anyway, it's a plugin, and it's got lots of tone mapping options in there. It's all free. Um, and if you have any questions about GIMP, don't buy a book. Just Google it, and I'm sure the guy, you know, there's a video or a, or a, you know a help page somewhere. Uh, but this one, you can see really stark um, uh, colors that uh, really I think accentuate the form and the different contrast without, but it takes you away from the reality of the building. So it's, it's almost like putting a building on its side, you know, you're not recognizing it's a building anymore. It's more the geometry and here you're kind of seeing exactly the, the geometry because it's, uh, it, there's, isn't really a reality anymore to, to tie you to, uh, to, to what it really is. Uh, next. And this is uh, from BWI. As you're walking to the airport from the parking garage, you know, I took this shot and again, tone mapped everything. So all the colors are completely different. Uh, but you see uh, it's kind of this um, unrealistic alien effect. But there's, uh, again, the ge geometry stands out. There's this kind of triangular shape here and um, lots of rectangles, and uh, and then there's a, a contrast between the kind of the uh, geometric forms below and then the sky above, which are highly irregular, irregular. So I'm trying to balance all these different forms together uh, in this shot. Next. And this one, um, I do have some that are tone map, but uh, I decided to pick this one instead. This is just the, uh, I believe this is the library at Chesapeake College, just just uh, maybe half an hour over the the, um, the, the Bay Bridge. And uh, uh, just took a picture of this at an angle um, and you get a lot of geometry, lots of curves and, and, um, uh, and then there's a little bit of a contrast between the the reflection and the steel and the glass, and then there's below the um, um, there's kind of a triangular shape for the patio, and then above there's this uh, not quite triangular shape for the sky. So I was trying to balance all the different forms: the glass in the middle, and the sky and the patio, I'm trying to balance those together. David, uh, I got a couple questions for you. Okay. Cheryl asks, Cheryl asks, what type of lenses, lenses do you prefer to use for these architectural images? Um, well, I mean, so the, <laughs> the snarky answer is whatever you have available. So for the Anne Arundel Community College, that yellow and green, I had my cell phone because I was, wasn't planning on taking photos. And, but for this one, I actually you know, got all the camera stuff together and um you know uh, drove over there intentionally to take photos so uh for this I'm, i was using the sony and then i've got this uh it's a, a you know it's a it's a high quality lens but it's a zoom lens and so i might have used that zoom lens i think it might go from i don't know 24 to 100 or something like that forgotten the exact dimensions but you know it, it takes something wide and also goes to, you know, like a telephoto. Hmm. And um, then you can kind of take a ton of shots. If you've got a telephoto, just take a ton of shots and, and see which ones you like in the end. So for something like this, I might take three, three to 500 shots wow. and then just go through them in Lightroom and see which ones um, I like the best. Okay. And then after that, you really spend a lot of time trying to maybe put them at an angle or, you know, uh, do black and white or tone mapping or, or, you know, just leave it as is. Um, so no, yeah, ho hopefully that answers the question. Okay, whatever lens whatever you have. But what is the dream lens? lens? If you've got the money to splurge, what is the, what is the, the crazy, crazy thing, thing to buy that would make that would make these a little bit more unique? Um, well, you need a collection of lenses because the, the nice thing about a cell phone is you really do zoom 
you can in the same package have an ultra wide with a telephoto and um you you know there it can, the the cameras i don't think they really go from ultra wide to, to um to felt telephoto i mean they technically go from wide to telephoto but nothing where you can really zoom in that much but i, I guess i would like um for when you're getting close to a building, something really wide angle. Gotcha. And um, I don't actually have a wide angle uh, myself, unfortunately, for the Sony. But I would like, you know, like it um, a really wide angle for that. And then uh, this zoom lens is a pretty nice lens. It goes out to, you know, maybe 100, 120. And then, um, and then maybe uh, on top of that, uh, something that goes up to 300, but for the for the Sony, th those are pretty expensive lenses. So I, I don't have that. I don't have one of these super zooms. Gotcha. Unfortunately, John I would Verdi, use them. Up, oh, go ahead. John Verdi says uh, Baltimore geometry. The fingers look like rhombuses, not rectangles, because of the angle. Uh, the Baltimore geometry. That was uh, that might have been the one before. I think it's this one here. Oh, the BWI. Yeah. Rhombuses. Yeah. 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 There's there. Yeah, that's right. There, but the, you do see geometry there. That's uh, yeah. The, I I uh, I didn't want to get into rhombuses and um, quadrilaterals. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was you know trying to keep with the more the simpler ones, but. Uh, um, but yeah, that's a good point. Thanks. And then Bob Weber says the images that go right to the each edge give the impression of vast extent okay thank you yeah, yeah the, this is a beautiful building this uh, chesapeake uh, college library ready okay. to move on okay. where you are ready to go i'm next sorry one? i didn't hear we're ready to move on when you are oh, okay well, yeah let's go to the next one uh, yeah, I really, again, I totally apologize. I was not able to get this, um, but, uh, oh, great. Yeah, thank you. Good. Yeah, you did it. So there we go. So this is looking up at the Baltimore Museum of Art and then um, doing some tone mapping. So the, the sky, of course, is blue, and I changed that to pink, and the building is uh, um I don't think the building uh, really changed uh, color too much, but uh, um, that was the uh, um, that's another looking up where you're doing some tone mapping to get a different effect. And uh, uh, some might like the effect, some might not like the effect, but that's you know it's just a, a different a, a way to get a different looking photo. Uh, next. And uh, yeah, this is a, another one that's on its side. This is uh, the Mu National Museum of the American Indian in DC. And it's been cropped a little bit. I actually, I think I've entered this and may have won an award years and years ago, but it's, um, it was a, it's a better looking photo when it's not, um, you know, butchered like I have done with uh, the creating these slides, but you can still, you can see the ideas there's, a, a lot of geometry there's a lot of curves here there's some triangles um and then you know the curves are it's just a beautiful building you can see the the parallel curves uh, uh that were, are actually will wrap around the whole building and uh, uh but this is a way to look at it differently you're really emphasizing the curves by looking at this way whereas if it was rotated and you're looking at it representationally, you'll see, oh, well, it's a nice building and yeah, I can see curves, but here you don't even see the building. You just see the curves and you kind of wonder, where is that? What is that? Um, so that it's a little more abstract, but it emphasizes the geometry a little more. Next. Uh, similar here, again, I apologize for butchering this photo, but uh, this is actually in Annapolis. You can go um, to, uh, it's on uh, Riva Road. It's a bank, you know, the Bank of America, I think is what it's called. I'm not sure if the Bank of America is still there, but it's um, uh, near Festival Plaza, um, you know, where the giant is. It's a, basically across the street. 
and um, so you can see different geometry here. Um, there, there are more curves in the actual photo, but here you can kind of start to see the, the curves of steel that kind of wrap around and then um, it's been distorted a little bit. So these curves look maybe a little bit different than if they're um, rotated 90 and you can kind of see, oh, this is the side of, of a building. But uh, anyway, uh, you can see a lot of the geometry, the parallel lines and curves and um, it's, uh, it just gives you a geometric way of looking at that uh, architecture. Uh, next. Okay, and then the, I, this might be the last section, just uh, looking up, I've uh, done a few looking ups already, like with the Bank of America, but here's some more that are just looking up in, in order to emphasize uh, the geometry in a different way. Next. Uh, again, I apologize, <laughs> I couldn't quite uh, get this to fit, uh, but uh, this is the, um, is the one before, yeah, that one, I, it actually, yeah, it, there actually is sky above, and I couldn't quite get that for some reason. Um, but the, it's a, this is a pyramid building. Uh, it's an it's a condominium building in Ocean City, and it's a normal shot. I believe this was with the cell phone, even though I, I did take pictures with my Sony. But uh, um, I just found the cell phone is easier to get the the framing right that I wanted. And um, so in in Lightroom the in the cloud-based version of Lightroom, you can, you know, put a photo like this in. It's got, you know, blue sky surrounding the building, of course. And then um, it's got a new feature called, um, uh, it's a mask feature that will select either the sky or the subject. And that's all it does. You can't select like a sub part of the subject. It's either the sky. So you select the sky and then you go in and, um, change the sky to desaturate and then expose change the exposure and you can get a black sky even though the building itself is colored so um here i think the side of the building the letters say um uh, i forgot now i hard to read greetings something seasons greetings i think it was is what it says and um there's a g missing at the bottom uh because uh, I wasn't able to get the photo kind of in the frame right, these slides. But uh, um, so th th this is a, an effect that gives you a, a, a starker contrast with the building itself and the geometry by making the sky black and then leaving the building kind of as is. Uh, but that's look, uh, one example of looking at. Uh, next. Is another example. This is in the Air Force Memorial in D.C. Just looking up, and you can see these um, uh, these this uh, sculpture, uh, the curves of the sculpture, and this is also um, it's very very geometric. You can see these curves and uh, um, the sculpture itself. The the, the cross sections, are, I believe, are rectangles, so you can kind of see it the curves in this kind of geometric shape. And then it's uh, desaturated. Um, uh, next. Uh, another example of the Chesapeake uh, College. Uh, again, you're just, uh, you know, looking up, but there's this, this is actually looking up, but uh, bouncing it off the glass. So you're looking up, but it actually is giving you, a, <laughs> well, it looks like you're taking a photo of, building but in fact this is a reflection of a building but you know you're looking up because you can see the underside of one of these steel things here so anyway i just thought that was a different contrast of different elements um and uh i i i, I kind of liked it but I, I i you know i like these reflections with steel and and stuff like that um next and here's uh, one that's uh, in church circle uh, looking up, um, I apologize. This actually has a this photo is actually better than it looks. Um, there's actually a bird that I had to chop out because I don't know how to get these photos in there. But there's actually a bird that's above there <laughs> in the top part of the photo, and uh, so it's. Um, but then I took the sky, which is blue, 
and again, you know, selected um, the sky in Lightroom and then changed it to white, just as a way of trying to emphasize, again, the geometry. Uh, you know, there's lots of triangles and rectangles, and, and then there's a brick versus the, um, you know, the concrete. So there's lots of different forms here, and you just try to, and there's different colors and trying to balance all those together to get um, this image. Uh, next. Another one of the pyramid buildings. This one I think is completely desaturated, if I remember right. And then I selected the sky and turned it black. Um, again, the un, this, <laughs> you know, the original photo looks a lot better. You see the uh, the the back actually when you shoot it from this angle, it kind of creates a par a parabola. And here, unfortunately, the parabola is gone. You're only seeing the bottom part of the parabola here, but actually there's more of the building that comes out like a parabola. And um, so it actually has a little more geometry that's kind of hidden because I wasn't able to get this in the slide correctly. But here you, you do see lots of uh, uh, rectangles and there's some triangles and uh, so different uh, uh, shapes as, as well here. And then there's some nice patterns, I thought, to this one. Uh, next. And this one was taken in Roslyn, um, you know, just waited for planes to go over and, uh, you know, shooting basically straight up at the side of this building. And then when planes come over, you can kind of get the reflection of the plane in there. Uh, but another kind of architectural photo where you're looking up uh, to get a different perspective. Uh, next. Uh, another one, Chesapeake College looking up at the you know, looking up at the wall, and then you're getting these um, uh, reflections on one side. I think the left uh, side is actually the library. The, these are the more or less the actual colors. Didn't uh, tone map this one, and then the reflection is on the right side. Uh, next, uh, this is at Mount Royal Avenue. I don't know if this is part of Micah. Uh, or not, but I believe it's next to a mica building. Um, but uh, just a really beautiful building is nothing but glass and maybe these steel frames here, but I kind of liked the glass and the steel and the reflection of the, of the, the clouds uh, for this one. I forgot there was maybe some kind of effect applied to this um, I'm not sure what it was. It wasn't tone mapping, I don't think, but it, there may have been something done to the clouds because some of them look a, a tiny bit on the green side. Um, next. Okay, so that, that's it. Uh, here's the, the first uh, article um, is the uh, um, article of uh, Julia Shulman's iconic photo of the Hollywood Hills um, uh, house, and um, and then below that uh, is one of his books. That's the book that I think I took that quote from um, earlier in the talk. Um, next, I think we've got a few more references, and then this, uh, I took the Norman McGrath quote out of um, that book of his. Uh, and then uh, the Steve Gear, I actually saw that he had done these skyscraper, it's called the Skyscraper Magic Series. I, I, that was in Lens um, work, the magazine Lens work. But he, I believe he's uh, has some of them um, also on his website, uh, stevegear.com. I think that might be the last slide. It is. Okay, great. David, when you when you go out knowing that you're going to be shooting architectural photography, what do you what do you put in your camera bag? If you if you're not just using your phone. Um so the you know the the I I guess I prefer the Sony in almost every case. I mean, I generally will take the Panasonic because the Pan, the I've got a GH4 and it's got a uh, smaller sensor, so the um, zoom lenses that you buy are a lot cheaper. And so, if I actually cannot get close to something, 
then I'll use the zoom of the Panasonic. Um, but if it's if I'm able to get close to something, then you know the uh, uh, thing is a twenty four to one hundred or something like that for the Sony is what I would use. It's a it's a really good lens. It's a little dark on the edges when you're at twenty four. So if you're doing it as wide open as you can, you're going to get um, a little bit of, of uh, fringing on the corners. But except for that, um, it's a it's a really a nice lens. So I would I would take that. I would say the Sony. What about tripods or or uh, polarizers or neutral density filters? Uh, so um, the I don't really use a lot of um, pol- I don't use polarizers. Basically, um, have not found them to you know create anything really of a different. Um, element for this type of photography. Um, for tripods, I tend not to. I mean, there are times when I would, if I'm really trying to get an actual, you know, two dimensional shot, like the one for, um, you know, there was black and white. It was all white and black, basically, it's looking straight across the inner harbor at a building. Um, for that, I might use one but uh, generally um, if the lighting is good you don't need it if the lighting's not good then of course you do need a tripod so okay um, it, I, I always take a tripod but I uh, don't find that if, if you're taking it at di- during the day then uh, you usually don't need one I'm gonna bring your face back into the stream now uh, okay. David says some other architectural photographers you may want to look at are Robert I'm going to butcher some of these names. Robert Polidori, Ezra Stoller, Bernice Abbott, uh, and he says, Walker Evans did a great deal of architectural work, the best of it in upstate New York in the mid-1930s. And he says, if you do a a little googly search, you'll be able to find a lot of those. Okay, thank you. Do we have any more questions for David? David, what do you, what is your your kind of, uh, what is your research for if you're going to go to a town, you don't know what the architectural photography is. Do you, do you try to go through maybe Google Street View and, and find out maybe places you'd like to go to? No. No. I mean, usually I, I just show up. I mean, for example, this library, I didn't know about the, li- the library at Chesapeake College. I didn't know about that. Kind of a happy, uh, happy you know, accident. If you, so. if you just look around, you'll see geometry almost everywhere. Um, so there's a... Um, there's a guy in Japan who's actually a, a British artist living in Japan, and he has a, a blog that he publishes his photos. Um, I've forgotten what the blog is called, but he's a Buddhist, so he actually um, walks to the temples. That's a you know that's a I guess a religious thing that they do for part of their practice, and so he he goes to these temples and he'll take photos. And ju- he'll just find geometry, even though this is out in the country and there's hardly, you know, this is not Tokyo. This is actually way out in the country in the, um, in the mountains of, of mm. Japan. And he'll find, you know, lots of geometry there. If you can find geometry there out in the country of Japan, you know, where there's a w- way away from the city life, you can find it anywhere. We can, you know, you just have to look for the geometry and then try to isolate that. And I just find that a lot of these, the buildings downtown in the city, they, they tend to have uh, a lot of the geometry already there. So it's, it's kind of easy pickings. Wow. Scott says, David, have you tried any, uh, use any of the tools in Photoshop for straightening lines? Uh, yeah. Lightroom has that. I, I, I do use that a lot. Gotcha. Any other questions for David out there? What by far is your favorite building to photograph, David? Oh gosh. Um, well, this I just discovered this pyramid building in the past month, so uh, <laughs> I'm liking that. That's the one in Ocean City. I'm loving that building. Um, before that, uh, I I like everything. Um, the you know I would say the Brown Center that glass mica building where you know the, with the reflection of the sky um 
I, I would say that's my favorite building in Baltimore. What was the one that had the kind of pink clouds? The kind that of was the pink Baltimore clouds. Museum of Art. It's, yeah. a, it's another nice one. It's definitely a very nice photo. That's my favorite of the of the images tonight. For sure. And, and so in, and then in DC, I would say my favorite is the National Museum of the American Indian. Ah. That one, um, there's lots and lots of angles, and, and I find that you really have to take a, a huge number of shots to make sure that you've got every different thing. But um, yeah, it's uh, so yeah, it's 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 just lots of fun, and and it, there aren't many really technical things you need to know. I mean, you can just you know. Uh, you shoot things from a different angle. That's all. I mean, it's really uh, something anyone can do, even with a cell phone. Huh. Shirley or, or Rich, I think that might be Rich. Rich asks, how important is light and the time of day to what you're trying to do? Oh, it's, it's very important. I, I've tried uh, taking um, shots at night in bad light and... Um, I mean, there. It's. It, it, I would say it's very important. I mean, so I, it's a skill that I still need to build. You know, taking shots at night, um, but and you know, and trying to get the geometry out of that. But I've not really found any. Uh, I've not really acquired the skill to to get that. If that might be a great thing to do, I would imagine. Uh, for example the um iconic photo the julie shulman photo i believe that was at night you can kind of see the in the background you know below you can see the city lights and and so uh you know with the tripod you can get great great shots at night but uh i've not um i've not I, i've not been able to get any good shots yet gotcha uh, you know i, I try but <laughs> Need to keep need to keep learning. Building on Rich's question, Terry asks, "Do you revisit places for different lighting?" Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I uh, I've gone back to that Mica building, the Brown Center, many times. Yeah, it's uh, you know different times of year. You, you get uh, yeah, definitely. That's, uh, I, that's a great idea. Scott says he had a friend who who photographed architecture. Uh, for a living, and every now and then, uh, Scott would drive by him staring at a building. An hour later, he would pass by going the other way, and there he was. He had crossed the street and was still staring at the building. <laughs> Is that you, David? <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's just fun to just <laughs> walk around. We've been, you know, uh, I've been in and out of the that brown building many times looking, I mean, you know, taking shots inside and outside you know, always these kind of strange angles, not really getting anything representational, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun to look at it from all kinds of different, different, you know, from the back and it looks totally different, uh, <laughs> and then from the front or the, and the sides look totally different. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Last call for questions. Any last thoughts, David, before we close the stream? Uh, no, it's been an honor and fun, and uh, thanks very much for the privilege of uh, giving this talk. I just want, you know, it's very simple, and anyone can do all this. Uh, there's nothing technical about it. So this is how I don't do architectural photography. <laughs> well, David's been a, in a, a member of the Ronald Camera Club for a long time, and his architectural work is absolutely amazing, and it wows every single one of us. And that's why uh, we've uh, we've asked him to come and talk to us again, and and we're very lucky to have him talk to us. He he may think that he's not an architectural photographer, but you know what? I think he's uh, being a little being a little modest over there. Scott okay, well, says thank you. Scott says there are several versions of the Shulman photo, both day and night. Shulman worked until he was about a hundred years old. You might say he fell on his tripod. That's interesting. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, well, David, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, we're, thank you. We're, we're blessed to be able to have uh, have you kind of sitting here and, and talking to us about your process a little bit. And uh, we look forward to you know seeing what you produce in the future. Okay, great. And we'll say goodnight to everybody. Don't forget, Saturday, January 15th is the trip to in Baltimore to the, uh, what is it, the 
Basilica of the Assumption. Make sure to check the email out because there is a scheduled tour that uh, that our field trip chair Ed has has set up. I believe Rich Talarski is um, is heading that up for Ed because Ed couldn't be there. And then on January twentieth, we're back to a digital contest with the theme of open. And keep an eye out from Ron, our contest chair, for that. Cheryl, uh, Cheryl's got the last comment. She says, "Very inspiring images. Thank you, David." Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Good and uh, we'll see everybody next week. Good night.